Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is melting range or temperature as per USP chapter 741. Let us see what is melting range or temperature. Melting range, melting temperature or melting point is defined as those points of temperature within which or the point at which the first detectable liquid phase is detected to the temperature at which no solid phase is apparent. Melting point is the point at which the material starts to show melting and range is when all material is melted and transformed into liquid phase. Melting transition may be instantaneous for a highly pure material. As a general rule, if the purity is high, the melting point will be on the upper side of the range and it melts instantaneously. That means it melts totally in one go. This is general characteristics of compounds. This has to be understood in detail. If there is a contamination in the material or if it is impure material, there will be a drop in the temperature from the expected range. So if any material has much lower melting range than expected range, it may be suspected to be impure. Just for information, for solvents, there will be elevation or increase of boiling point if it is impure or contaminated. For more interesting information, you may browse internet, elevation of boiling point or depression of melting point. Usually, a range is observed from the beginning to the end of the process. So, melting range is start of the melting to completion of melting process. Sample size, particle size, efficiency of heat diffusion and heating rate can significantly impact the test results. All these listed aspects have significant impact on the test results. So, all these elements have to be considered while carrying out the melting point range test. Let us see what kind of apparatus is used for melting point test. The apparatus consists of a glass container for a bath of transparent fluid, a stirring device, an accurate suitable thermometer and a controlled source of heat. Most comfortable apparatus uses a bath with transparent fluid because the heat transfer is uniform and the melting process could be clearly verified visually also. You get variety of models, manual, semi-automatic, fully automatic, etc. I used to like the manual operated instrument. It gives opportunity to set each important parameter manually and check for compliance. Of course, semi-automatic or fully automatic instruments are good and necessary settings of all important parameters are taken care of automatically through electronic controls. The fluid can be liquid paraffin uh, for low melting materials and silicon oil for high melting materials. The fluid can be liquid paraffin for materials that melt below 100 degrees Celsius. If the liquid paraffin is heated beyond 100 degrees Celsius for longer period, it turns dark and it is difficult to monitor the melting process. For higher temperatures, silicon oil suits best. It has higher boiling point of around 315 degrees Celsius and does not turn dark even after long usage. Heat transfer fluid like xanthotherm can also be used. It has about 
500 to 600 degrees boiling point but it is slightly colored the fluid has to be sufficient to dip the thermometer bulb so that the bulb is still 2 centimeters above the bottom of the bath the requirement is to ensure uniform heat transfer from the fluid to thermometer to record the exact temperature in the bath heat source may be supplied by open flame or electricity in all the modern instrumentation usage of open fire is avoided in fact it is not a good practice to have open flame in the laboratory as a matter of safety so a controlled electrical source is used mostly another type of apparatus is with a block of metal that may be heated at a controlled rate the block has smaller holes to accommodate the capillary tubes and thermometer for monitoring the process typically by means of a beam of light so another type referred as apparatus 2 uses a metal block with electrical heat source the block is heated at a controlled rate to achieve the required temperature the metal block does the job of the fluid bath in apparatus 1 but this type is not popular because of its inherent difficulties in handling routinely the detector signal may be processed by a microcomputer and display the range or temperature visual examination may be made manually through a magnifying lens to record the melting range the process may be monitored through an electronic processing method or manually the microcomputer system automatically records the temperature at various stages of operation visual monitoring is done through a magnifying lens to look into the melting process clearly let us see the methodology use capillary tube of about 10 centimeters long and 0 0.8 to 1.2 millimeters internal diameter with a wall thickness of 0 0.2 millimeters to 0 0.3 millimeters did you check the dimensions of the capillary tube anytime just for fun you can check once the length may be one or two centimeters longer but the diameter and the thickness are very important if you can't measure these dimensions at your laboratory ask your supplier to provide information on this based on the information you can check for compliance because these parameters have significant impact on the test results grind gently to obtain a finely powdered material in a mortar and pestle assembly make a fine powder so that the sample can be packed into the capillary tube easily dry required amount of sample till it is rendered anhydrous it is important that the sample must be dry and does not stick to the walls of the capillary tube also if there is moisture in the sample the melting process is not clear and it may drag on making the decision hard on exact melting point you may have to dry longer period to make the sample totally anhydrous take smaller quantity adequate for filling the capillary tube for drying it may be a little faster pack sufficient amount of sample into the capillary tube carefully to about 2.5 millimeters to 3.5 millimeters so pack up to 2.5 to 3.5 millimeters carefully this can be achieved by practice for a couple of times tap on a hot surface for compact packing of the sample compact the sample on a hot surface by tapping three or four times let us see a simple tool on how effectively tapping could be done you should have this simple tool in your laboratory
let us see the model of a simple tool for compacting the sample. Take a 30 to 35 centimeters long clear glass tube with a diameter of 1.5 centimeters. You can visualize a small burette size tube. Hold the tube vertically on a hard tiled bench top. Drop the filled capillary tube through this tube vertically on the hard surface. Repeat the same process three or four times. After three or four times tapping, the level of the sample gets compacted as below. See the volume goes down slowly and now you can see how compacted the sample in the capillary tube. Let us see how class 1 materials are tested using apparatus 1. Heat the fluid in the bath up to 30 degrees Celsius below the expected melting point of the sample under uniform stirring. Make sure to avoid vertex formation. For example, if the expected temperature range of a sample is about 150 to 152 degrees Celsius, the fluid in the bath should be heated with uniform controls up to 120 degrees Celsius, which is 30 degrees below the expected minimum melting range. Vertex formation will not mix the fluid uniformly. It only revolves the fluid against the walls of the container. Vertex formation can be avoided by making the stirrer slightly off-center. Mixing will be uniform and the heat transfer will be good. Insert the packed capillary tube carefully. The bulb of the thermometer should be closer to the sample in the capillary tube. Now insert the capillary tube into the designated hole. This arrangement of closeness to the thermometer bulb to the capillary tube is required to get accurate temperature of the melting. This aspect is taken care of in the design of the apparatus by instrument manufacturer themselves. This arrangement will provide accurate temperature measurement for melting process. Adjust the rate of heating at about 3 degrees Celsius per minute till the temperature reaches 3 degrees Celsius below the expected lower limit of melting range. Now, it is necessary to adjust the rate of heating to 3 degrees per minute. This should continue till the temperature reaches 3 degrees Celsius below the expected lower temperature of the melting range. That means in the same example, it is necessary to adjust the rate of heating at 3 degrees per minute from 120 degrees to 147 degrees Celsius. Reduce the heating to raise at a rate of 1 to 2 degrees per minute and continue heating till melting process is complete. Now reduce the rate of heating at about 1 to 2 degrees till the melting process is complete. This method is used for all materials unless a separate class is specified in the individual monograph. When the apparatus 2, where a metal block is used for heating process, same procedure as described above will be used from packing the capillary tube, except that the heating rate is adjusted to 1 to 2 degrees from 100, 120 degrees Celsius itself. Let us see how class 1A materials, which are mostly low melting materials, are tested using apparatus 1. Pack and compact the sample as described earlier. So for class 1A materials, packing and compacting is done exactly as described above. Heat the fluid in the bath up to 10 degrees below the expected melting point of the sample. So here heating is restricted only up to 10 degrees below the expected melting range. Adjust the rate of heating to 
1 plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius per minute. Here also, now the temperature is adjusted at a rate of 1 plus or minus 0.5. Insert the capillary tube when the temperature is below 5 degrees of the expected melting range and continue till completion of the melting process. So, even the capillary tube is inserted only when the temperature is below 5 degrees Celsius of the expected melting range. Let us see how identification of melting point is done. The temperature at which the column of the substance under test is observed to collapse definitely against the side of the tube at any point indicates the beginning of melting and the temperature at which the test substance becomes liquid throughout corresponds to end of melting or melting point. When the sample starts melting with a wetness with a meniscus in the capillary tube, record the temperature as the starting point, the lower point of the temperature range. When it transforms totally into liquid that is considered as the upper temperature of the range. The two temperatures fall within the limits of the melting range. So, the temperature between these two points is considered as melting range. If melting occurs with decomposition, the melting temperature corresponding to the beginning of the melting is within the range specified. Certain materials tend to decompose at the melting point. In such cases, when the melting starts, check that whether or not the temperature is within the range. Let us see the details of the calibration standards that are used to calibrate the melting point apparatus. Vanillene for a range of 81 to 83 degrees Celsius. Acetanilide for a range of 114 to 116. Benzoic acid for a range of 121 to 123 degrees Celsius. Urea 132 to 135 degrees Celsius. Sulfanilamide 164.5 to 166.5 degrees Celsius. Caffeine 234 degrees to 237 degrees Celsius and anthraquinone for a range of 283 degrees Celsius to 286 degrees Celsius. These are the few calibration standards for melting point apparatus. There are more standards for calibration. You can choose suitable ones. Let us see the requirements for other classes. There are different procedures for class 1B, class 2 and class 3 types of materials. However, discussion on these types is not in the scope of this video. There are other detailed prescriptions for these types of materials. Since most of the requirements are encompassed in one of the class 1 or 1A, the focus is limited to these two classes. If there is any special request from any user, those procedures also will be covered at appropriate schedule. Similar information is available in European Pharmacopoeia Chapter 2.2.14 and Indian Pharmacopoeia Chapter Number 2.4.21. I hope you understood the intricate requirements of the melting range test. Try to incorporate all the salient points into your test method to get more accurate results. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.